This one is called the pants. Take eight. All right. Now, why is it called yep. the pants? You never told our listeners. This <laughs> thing with Daryl and Ed. Why is it? You never guys told me people. either. We all Why know is it the pants? The because there used to be a radio show and they would judge songs. It was either the pants or, or the mustard. <laughs> into an outrageous jackpot. Well, that was the pants. Your I host, Daryl and good Ed, one. I are up to administer a refreshing you know the guy from wait, uh, Sex Pistols? That will inspire oh, yes. Lori was on his show. Yeah, that guy. The funniest things. Now, here are your hosts, Daryl and Ed. Welcome to Funniest Thing. Oh my goodness, we made it. Where each week we share stories about how stepping out boldly always leads to better than expected outcomes. Thank goodness, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, and it goes perfectly with today's title. Yes, I'm Daryl. And I'm Ed. And we're broadcasting live from middle school studios in downtown Culver City, the heart of Screenland. The very heart of Screenland. Not a lot of people know that Culver City was actually the heart of Screenland. Yeah, they? no, they don't realize that this is where the movie making magic began. That's right, that's right. Uh, and today's, speaking about movie making magic, today's topic for the episode or title is don't pull somebody else into your nightmare ah during times of emotional upheaval it is tempting to believe that our fears are real we unknowingly magnify them by lashing out against ourselves and others daryl and ed have found that the surest way out of difficulty is to affirm that we are already blessed in ways that are beyond our current understanding Oh man, someone who's going to really help us out on this topic today during the second segment, Daily Word contributing writer Samuel Patrick Smith joins this episode to read and discuss today's Daily Word, which is free. Free! Free! Yes, we love that. And speaking of free, well... Should we go into the breaths? Yeah, these are excellent breaths. Yeah, because what what's really going on when we're... We get these nightmares of thought that are fearful, and we start to think the world is against oh, us. Or, or I think I did something bad, we so I better I better wrong. go tell people how bad I am. Yes, and we don't real often realize that we're the ones who are creating the drama for ourselves because somewhere in the, we really do have in the past believed that those things were true and acted from those places. And it never turns out so well. So we started to revere these fears that were going on inside of our head. And in pl- really, in place of a loving God, a little fearful Paul Revere started to ride around. Clanking pots and pans, screaming, ah, the British are coming! The British! That's right, that's right. And, and we get our own version of that. We're not good enough for this meeting! Holy smokes! Oh, I gotta do something! I what must... are they gonna think about my... Or how, do, or how dare this person do yeah. that? I gotta call Time Warner and give him a piece of my mind! There's no way I'm gonna get out late to school and this guy's taking the time to stop in the middle of the road! You know, it's like... Oh, look at this! It's a texter at the stoplight! Turned green three seconds ago! That's right. It's a right. texter! Beep, 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 That's beep! That's right. That's right. So... In order to just clear the Paul Revere from our head. It looks like Comfort needs a Revere removed from his head as well. So this is going to be actually helpful. <laughs> Pull the Revere out your rear. Yeah. Okay, so. All right. Take one breath to clear our mind. <sighs> to hell with Paul Revere. There is nothing to fear. Ah. <sighs> To hell with Paul Revere. Mm. There's nothing to fear. Ah, I like that. To hell with Paul Revere. Oh, wait. Oh. To, to hell, hell with Paul, Paul Revere. Revere. <laughs> There's, There's nothing, nothing to, to fear, ah, Pilgrim. Oh my gosh, Paul Revere has left the building. Yes, he has. <laughs> With one final poot. <laughs> his, his final midnight ride. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have great readings oh, yeah. that really help us to wake up. I mean, because this is our whole job. I think this is why a lot of people 
Yeah, the spiritual uh, writings call it awakening. I mean, yes, but we think yeah. of it as awakening, but it's really like I gotta wake up. I'm having these thoughts. Nothing really is going on. I'm creating, making drama in my life. Oh my! If I could God. just wake up and remember that, and remember that no matter how hard my head is pulling against life right now, do you know it does not much... change the fact that we live in a loving universe. No. Do you know how many people you just let off the hook by letting them know? That a spiritual awakening yes, just means awakening from this fearful dream I've been holding myself to. Yes, it's, it's funny you say that because I've had that awakening moment even when I was going to spiritual things, yes. right? And I was going, part of my awakening was why am I going and listening to all these other people? Yes. And I'm really feeling resentful by the end. I got to just get out there and live this in real life. And this is why we love our show and this is what our show is all about. The best thing. Like, uh, who was Emmett that talks about the, your life is, I mean, a lot of people, Eric Butterworth, your life is your laboratory. And it really is because that's where you get the real results and that's where you get the most fun and that's where the funniest things happen. Anytime I find myself like, uh, like getting all upset about something. Right. And then willing to choose to let go of it. Yeah. And start myself believing yes. on what's true. That wait a minute, this is, you know, this is crazy. Let me just, right. you know, nothing happens by mistake. Everything always works out for the best. Yeah. And every and I let that's the awakening. Any moment like that is an awakening. True, and, and part of that is even forgiving myself because like sometimes before it's like today on my way to drop Elliot off to work. I was like before I knew it, somehow Paul Revere was up on his horse riding inside me. I had gone from a nice, peaceful morning routine to that. And so we have some great readings to help oh, yes. us to clear the judgment and like oh. what, all the things that get us caught up in the nightmare. And we got some great funniest things coming in the third segment. Right, right. All right. This is from Emmett Fox. And this actually we follow and you could follow yes. her as well uh, on Facebook. It's Joanne Corsiato. We refer to her Emmett Fox post lovingly as... Corsiato and Miracles. That's right. And you could also, uh, we strongly suggest, we even put it on our website, in our website And by the way, her list. page, isn't it, her, is her page is the Emmett, M- Fox. Emmett Fox. It's just Emmett Fox. Yes. It says author underneath his name. Yeah, so look that up on Facebook. Also, we've listed this on our page that includes websites we enjoy. Oh, on, yes. On DarylAndEd.com, but I'll just give it to you here. It's EmmettFox.net. Yeah, and the funniest thing is we got Sammy Smith coming in during the second segment who is works with Corsiato, has been editing the a new Emmett Fox book that either just released or is about to release. Yes. So we'll talk to him more about that. There's so many funniest S- things. So many connections. Mm-hmm. So let's, here we go. Let's get this clear. You are in your true nature, a divine being, and you are one with God now. You cannot know anything or experience anything except your own states of mind. And these state, these you can change by intelligent and persistent effort. Yes. Any deed or any happening is but the shadow cast by a thought. The secret of happiness and harmony is peace of mind, and there is no other. You find peace and harmony by getting right with God. And that's originally from Emmett Fox, Make Your Life Worthwhile. We're going to read a little bit more from that book as well. And our title today is Don't Pull Somebody Else Into Your Nightmare. And then this is so tempting when we're going through oh, yes. really challenging thoughts in our own mind. Because there is like there is like some religious religiosity about the belief that we should get real with the people around us and, you know, start... Yes. inadvertently magnifying the very thoughts that are causing us the problem. Oh my God, it's never like what we think. I gotta share this right now then, I forgot to tell you. So remember on last week's show, I shared that I had to call the cable company. I yes. noticed my bill had gone yes. up and yes. funniest thing, by blessing the situation. Yes. I mean, I tried calling the first time and I was irritated. Right. So I that didn't, never works. No, and I ended up with someone who was reluctant to help. Sure. I let go and I said, no, I'll call back when I'm at peace. Right. I called back when I'm at peace and I get the nicest person. Yes. Went out of his way to help me, lowered my bill back to the way it originally was and sent me a $150 gift card for being this longtime customer. Yes. Well, just yesterday I noticed the bill went up another $10. Okay, yes. So I felt that 
that nightmare come on like oh figures i'm gonna just give it to them like yeah. this is bull crap how many times do i have to waste right. my right. time right. calling right. them right. Right. i knew it was too good to be true so i had to tune all that out i call back well let me just say right there that's that's a big part of this oh yeah what makes this stuff work is identifying the beliefs because it's we don't just get irritated because we have a meeting or because we have to make a call it's because the thoughts that come up are like you just said this is too good to be true i'm not good enough like right. so in a way these are great opportunities for us to clear That's, those old yes. beliefs and start to have some new experiences. And just like Emmett Fox says, it takes intelligence and persistent effort to remind myself yes, it does. that this is not what I want. That's right. But if I stay in that, we think we're winning, but I'm going to give them oh a piece gosh, of my mind. Yes. But that's not really what I want. So I... I had I had, was tough, but I got through it. I called. The lady was so nice. I could not even be rude to her because right. she was so sweet. Yes. Well, get this. She goes out of her way, finds out that there was some glitch that made it go up. Yeah. But in her working through, right. she found that I can get it even lower. Yeah. So now it's even $22 even lower than it wow. was. Wow. And they're bringing new high-speed internet from 50 which I have super fast, yeah. 50 up to 200. Right. And, and it's all in this package cool too that I would have never known about. And she even said, this just came available. It's amazing. So these seemingly negative things. So I got to bless like what seemed like, yes. screw them. I'm going to yes. give them a piece Always. of my... And yes. if I fought them... That woman would not have wanted to even look for any benefit right. pack. She's just like, all right, pal, we'll get rid of all your movie channels and have at it. But yes. because of this, it really well, there's, works. There's two things that go that I thought about when you were talking, which was one, I have to consciously outward, out loud sometimes say, nothing can go wrong in my world. This can't be, there can't be anything going wrong because that does not happen in God's mind. I have to right. like really put the persistent effort into yes. believing that because that... That's what, like you were just saying, these things pop up. Of course, they're going to pop up and they might feel like inconveniences. But then that's the time where we bless it as success. And it turns into a blessing. Had my bill not gone up, yeah. or had everything stayed fine, it would have mm. been great. But had it not gone up, the seemingly right. negative thing right. is always a blessing. God got your attention yes. to say, hey, go I, call these people. Call these people because there's a better deal. And then the I was going to say the other thing is the blessing magnifies because it blesses our listeners because oh. our, our, our uh, internet speed is going to be higher. It blesses me. Yes. Comfort and I got, doesn't have to deal with and the legs. Her, and I'm going to say her name was Lise, Lisey because I remember her yeah. name and I said, I got to get your name right. And when they called for the survey an hour later, yeah. of course, I even put in there, Lisey was exceptional. So it made me feel good even to honor her later like Wonderful. I did the last guy. Oh, it just keeps getting better. That's awesome. This next reading is from Raymond Charles Barker, The Power of Decision. And it talks about how we use our imagination because we have to realize if something is not happening right now, then we are imagining it. Yes. Like I had a big meeting coming up this week. There are so many negative imaginings going into my going through my head. And the main our main actually the most liberating thing we can do is to realize, wait, I'm just imagining all this negative outcomes. And and Raymond Charles Barker from The Power of Decision said, The power of your imagination is tremendous. You have watched yourself use it to magnify negatives. Now use it to expand your consciousness of well being. For a moment, forget yourself as you believe yourself to be. You are now seeing yourself as the infinite knows you to be. Such a picture held in your mind for several moments has great therapeutic power. And let me tell you, what I discovered, the real reason I feared that meeting, because I was looking at my caseload, this piece of paper that says how many kids I work with, and my mind was imagining the people who work above me in like the department going, this isn't enough. He's not doing enough. But what I really realized underneath that was I was believing that I was not worthy for my life to be as good as it is. Yes. Because we're children of, of a, the most loving, creative God. We are that. So we, But we haven't al always had the thoughts in our head to realize that. I didn't always have those thoughts. So what I really realized underneath all of me imagining these people around me who were probably laying at home drinking uh, wine or whatever they were doing on their off time. They were not thinking about me or my meeting or looking at that paper, but I was imagining that. But I kept kind of reflecting and blessing and finally like I realized I was believing I wasn't worthy of how good my life was. Once I got over that, I blessed it. 
I went in the meeting. The meeting turned into a five-minute meeting. One of the people that was going to be there who would have probably made the meeting longer, just did, they didn't even know why she didn't show up. Because didn't of know all where this she blessing. Was. Yeah, so I was blessing, blessing, blessing. The, they looked right at the same paper that I had been had negative imagine I had you know dumped all those negative beliefs I had. The paper that you thought they're going to look at this and see I don't do shit. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but that's but the instead, exact paper. They went. They go. Oh yeah, you're doing plenty. And then they, 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 they actually brought me in to work with a few other kids, which conveniently fits so perfectly into my schedule, not during showtime or anything like that. Uh, that's the amazing thing. This too, like when you were telling me, like when you were saying it, it was, I mean, what they really, their response really from what you told me, when you told me the story the first time was like, Ed, you, I mean, you got a lot on your plate, but... That's precisely yeah, yes. but Like the exact opposite of yes. what you were believing, because you're good at your job. You're like all of us. We're good at our job. Yes. And then we enjoy it. But then it starts to come easy because we enjoy it. So we're open to inspired ideas, yeah. coincidences. We don't get upset as easy. So we become more efficient. And we mistake that as, I'm not doing enough because I'm not suffering during yeah. my day. Now, the good news is as soon as we let go yes. of these stories and these beliefs, even the th mistakes we think we made, Ooh, you this, have that reading, no, right? This reading's great. Even the mistakes we believe we made, because they're, God is not holding any kind of document that says the mistakes. God never even uh, witnesses any so-called mistakes. In the mind of God, those things never even happened. The, in Emmett Fox has a great reading yes. that says this in, in, in really nice language. And one last thing about Barker that came to mind, because it says, instead of thinking the negative, start believing yourself yeah. the things you would like, like blessing it. Yeah. And there's a step in Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, made a decision to turn my will and my life over to the care of God. Care of God, not yes. the unpredictable punishment of yeah. God, but the care of God. And it also means that, like he's saying, now, when I found out that I could... It was okay to believe like in the possibility of good outcomes. Yeah. It blew my mind. I didn't think I was allowed to do that. I know. And the, the crazy part is that's all God is thinking about. And that, yes. all, that's all nature. Our true yes. nature is only thinking about positive outcomes. Oh, this is perfect. How about this we read will, that yeah, and we'll go to the break. Perfect. And then this will be done. This will take us out. This is called Locust Dinner from Make Your Life Worthwhile. I'm at Fox. Make Your Life Worthwhile. Go to DarylNed.com. Either the script page or the reading list, and you'll find today's readings in the, in the script page and this book on the reading list. Yes, and it says here, And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. You can alter the past. There is no need to grieve over mistakes that were made hours or even many years ago. They can be changed. This is a challenging statement. It may sound like madness to the casual reader, but the student of metaphysics will take it in his stride because he knows that what we call time is not a reality. Perfect harmony is the law of being. Nothing can ever change that. Any seeming evil, any mistake made by you or by someone else is only a false belief. Yes. Often terribly real in appearance, but still a false belief, a kind of dream. Mm-hmm. All there is of it is the belief in your thought and that of certain other people. If you destroy this belief in yourself by realizing that, the, that only the action of God took place where the mistakes seem to be, you will get certain results. You will forget all about the mistake. Everyone else who knows about it will forget it too. Yes. All possible consequences of that mistake will disappear and everything will be as though the thing had never happened. Yes. Whoever made the mistake will never wish to make such a mistake again. The whole thing will have disappeared from the race mind and will be non-existent. Yes. You will see that this is the forgiveness of sins. Here, of course, the word sin means any kind of mistake that one can make. That's right. That's uh, right. When we let we go are of, free. That's right. We're the only and, ones dreaming those negative and stuff and holding them against ourselves. Exactly. Let them go. Let them go. Let it go. That's let right. it go. Let it go. Let, let it, it go. go. Coming up next, Daily Word contributing writer and the editor of the upcoming Emmett Fox book, Woo! Samuel Patrick Smith, joins us to read and discuss today's Daily Word. Free. free! You're killing me, Eddie. Thank you for listening to Funniest Thing on Unity Online Radio. This one is called The Pants. 
Wow. Dude. Did he accept your friendship? Did he accept your friendship? Oh. He's looking up for it right now. We got to send him more candy. Candy? Is that the prostitute that you like that lives near Unity Village? No, he lives near Unity Village. I want to send him over there. <laughs> oh, wait. We got something happening here. Oh, good. Can you see that? What? What do you say? What do you say? What? <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> you do audience. Uh, Why is it not adding? I'm going to say. I'm asking him to now. I have to do, Clayvon.